so real quick before you did that did Um, mm -hmm. And your your origin story, like how did you get into? Is that he? Uh, he made an age joke the last time we were. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that kuka. We there was no obligation to buy. We could just up and leave leave we didn't have anything else so it was it was a good option for us so that's what we did and um you know i i loved arizona so we ended up staying eight and a half years Got um it. we were in a million and a half dollar property on an acre with a eight car garage and a pool of the grotto and <laughs> i i really thought wow. that we were going to stay there like forever uh, real estate market was nothing like it is here um okay. we didn't do a lot in, in real estate didn't hold any rentals because then nothing cash flowed um mm. and this area that we were in was um fastest growing city neck and neck with cape coral at the, at, at the at the time and um cape coral florida so anyways um everything was new everything was built up and yep. new new freeways were going in so there wasn't a lot of um rehab opportunities like there is you know in, in detroit or mm -hmm. you know this older how the you know 20s 30s 40s that that we can rehab and increase the value there wasn't a lot of that there and people were depending on their you know appreciation and depreciation where you know i'm from metro detroit i i, I need to get paid every month or yeah. else i'm not getting into it right yeah so didn't hold a lot of rentals or anything we did mostly um business financing corporate structuring and stuff like that but okay um as well as the the mentorship but anyways um so the lease option worked for us so we refinanced and everything and then um fast forward to 2011 we decided to come back to michigan because family is more important than paradise ah. <laughs> oh. so but you know what I'm, I'm glad to be back because this is home this is where yeah. i'm from um i grew up in belleville and um this is where our family's at the real estate market's better um you know spring, this, this, spring summer and fall happy to be here winter i would right. be somewhere else <laughs> you see in arizona we didn't get the four seasons yeah. you know we got rain like four times a year and yeah. you know and obviously no snow but it was either winter like like in the middle of the winter christmas season it was like 65 degrees which is beautiful yep but it's like it's only hot or hotter yeah. <laughs> we're out here i love the fall i love the four seasons and stuff so michigan is home that's good so so with that you know when you moved out to arizona did you still had all your rentals here right no so that's uh, you know i have some regrets when when we're we're hitting a touchy subject here so in that's 2003 okay. when we knew we were we were moving um the property management companies were just i mean the horror stories about there were really no good property management companies yeah. that we knew of yep. right um so we didn't want to worry about that stuff halfway across the country right and so we sold everything okay. and we liquidated yep. <laughs> now this was before the crash Yep. Okay. So the good part about this is that we didn't lose anything during okay. the crash. So we didn't get hit like a lot of people did because yeah. we sold a few years, you know, five years before. Um, yeah. So, you know, that, that was some of them we held for less than a year. So, you yeah. know, we had that capital gains penalty that we had to answer to mm -hmm. and stuff. So, you know, like I said, some regrets. And then I'm thinking too, like here I am 30 years later, they would have all been paid for, you know, I've been sitting on them, but you know, Hey, I got them once I can get them again. Yes. Um, fast forwarding the, the long-term rentals that I did have, um, in 2017, I changed it to short-term rentals okay. and got into the Airbnb business. Mm -hmm. Um, been doing that since 2017. I've had 13 of those. Okay. Oh, so, yep. 
kind of um, I've been super host since the day I, I jumped on. So this is something I, I really, really enjoy. Um, and being in the account in, in the hospitality business yeah. is different than being a long term landlord. Yeah. So um, I did an episode with Nick Bastinelli and he is a short term rental guy, um, but he's also a real estate agent and he developed a lot of these um, automation systems to deal to deal with the short term rentals where he basically doesn't have anything to do. You know, the, the, yeah, it's crazy. See, that's where, okay, that's where I'm a dinosaur. Yeah. Because everything now, like I, when I do my mentorships or my coaching, it's like one-on-one, -on -one, let's do a Zoom call, yeah. let's get on the phone call or whatever. Um, and, and I can teach you strategies. I can teach you, you know, contracts and everything else. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm, keep in mind when I started, there was no internet. So yeah. we, 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 you know, I'm pen and paper and, yeah. and I can appreciate when I do business with other veteran investors that have been doing yeah. this, you know, 20, 25, 30 years, because we're all analog yes. <laughs> and all this, this new technology and, and stuff. Um, I don't know about anybody else, my, my age, but I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping up. Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, everything's automated and yeah. he's got this and this and this. I'm, you know, I don't have a team. I work solo. Yeah. Um, I have a cleaner for my real, my, my short term rentals. That's, that's as far as it gets. Yeah. Right. And then my, my son and I serve papers together. I'm a, I'm a process server. I've been doing that since I was 19. Um, and I, I used to serve papers when I was pregnant with him. And now <laughs> 26 years later, he's, well, I just served somebody at 6.30 tonight. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, you know, other than that, I don't have a team. I kind of do everything myself. So I've kind of learned how to do things, you know, pen and paper. Yeah. I, did was, I taught myself spreadsheets. I mean, that's yeah. how bad it is, right? Yeah. Um, so, but I can email. I, I do okay. I yeah. do okay, but um, this this new technology and stuff is is, is something that I I um, I really lack. Yeah, so and I think I honestly, I, I think to take your your short term rentals to the next level, watch that episode if you want to get a hold of him, get a hold of him because yeah. I, I think it's really cool because what he does is he takes four um, uh, booking they go yeah. into one calendar so that none of them can be double booked. Yeah. And then not only that, but he also has on that calendar, like every time somebody leaves, it's automatically, uh, like the, it's on a lock box where, uh, and then he has um, backups, redundancies, stuff like that. Yeah. But at least with the, the electronic lock box, they are only given that code for, and it's only good for that certain amount of time. Yep. You know? Yeah. No, now, now that you can program all that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I was going to do that, but I'm there all, uh, all the time. Anyways, I'm very yeah. hands on. So I'm there, you know, before yeah. check it. So I just manually check it. But yeah, yeah. I did get, there's a little Wi-Fi adapter yep. you have to buy to do that and change the code uh, yep. remotely. You yep. can unlock the door and everything, but I'm, I'm close to my places. So. Yeah. yeah. So there was, uh, yeah, you so it, 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 honestly, I like, I think it would be really good for you to, to watch or even read. Yeah, I will. But, um, cause a lot of his short term rentals are actually on the other side of the state and he's, he lives yeah. over here. So, um, I, I make a rule to stay within 20 minutes away from my places. Um, I've, I've shut down some would be parties. So I like, to uh, so yeah. So I think that was the reason why, he forced himself to go fully remote on that because of that. He didn't yeah. want to be a hands-on, that hands-on, you know, so. Yeah. But anyways, we're kind of digressing here. Um, so the short-term rentals, you're getting into those, okay? You're getting into- uh, what Yeah, I've been doing, doing short-term rentals since 2017, so. 17, yeah. yeah. So that's awesome. And um, are you still buying properties at the moment or are you just wholesaling? Like, how did you get into wholesaling? So wholesaling is where I started. Um, oh, okay. It's where a lot of people start. Yeah. And, but what I like 
and I and I believe everyone should learn wholesaling, whether you want to wholesale or not, is because you know if if you're even on the MLS and you're looking for yeah. something, you find something that that might be you know a decent deal. There's some yeah. deals on the MLS, oh, yeah. and um, you put in three offers and two of them get accepted. For example, yep. but you only have the cash to buy one. You're going to cherry pick which one you want to buy. What are you going to do with the other one? Walk away from it? No, it's still a decent deal. Wholesale it, lock it up under contract and assign the contract, right? You're still going to close on the one you're going to close on, but why walk away from money? Right? That might be yep. five or $10,000 you can make up because you've already negotiated. You've analyzed it. You negotiated it. You got a good deal there, but you can't act on it find someone else who can. So even if you're not a wholesaler, if you're actively buying, you, that should always be um, something that you should know yeah. how to do. 100%, I agree with you. Wholesaling, in my opinion, um, and it is for me, it's, it's a gateway into real estate and it's a way to see how, um, it, it's a way to get into real estate, get into the business and see what direction you want to go. Okay. Yeah. See whether you want to do buy and holds, whether you want to do fix and flips, whether you want to do lease options, sub to whatever, or all, all of the above, you know? So wholesaling and flipping is like working paycheck to paycheck. Yes. Right? When I you agree stop hustling, the money stops. Yep. Right? And it's a hustle. Mm -hmm. It's a hustle. Um, the flips are bigger paydays, but they're farther in between. And then wholesaling, yep. um, it is what you put into it, right? I mean, I um, a lot of new wholesalers don't don't. This doesn't help new wholesalers. Yeah, right. But all of my deals come from referral. Yep. I I don't market for um to get to, to get my deals i'll market to sell them to get them but yeah. all my deals come to me by referral um that's just because hey i've done the bandit signs i've done the direct yeah. mailings i've done the door knocking the driving for dollars and yeah. i've never done cold calling okay i've never done cold calling or buy leads i've never bought leads mm -hmm. um i never bought leads until i got my life insurance license okay. right i've always been taught to um bring the you know advertise and bring the people to me so Got the band it. signs and, and right so yep. i still have my penny buys houses um magnetic signs that we had on our truck <laughs> back in the 90s i still have them but um but anyways the the long-term wealth or the passive income comes with your rentals mm -hmm. you know because once you do the work you accumulate you know your rentals that and then the money comes in every month Yep. Hopefully, well, you don't. You know, you shouldn't have to do maintenance on a house every single month. But you know, it's 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 a lot easier than hustling for that next deal repeatedly, month after month after month after month. But you've got to do what you got to do to get to that point. So exactly. if you're wholesaling to flip, and then flipping to hold, mm -hmm. right, using the same money, you wholesale enough properties you can buy a flip, right? You've got 50 or $60,000 accumulated from your wholesaling deals. You can yep. buy a cheap flip, you might turn that into 85 or 90 or 100,000, use that 100,000 to buy your next flip or so forth, but you're still wholesaling, right? Now you're able, now you've got some cash so you can cherry pick those wholesale deals, what might work for you, right. wholesale the rest, but now you've been like, oh, that's in my neighborhood. That's in my area. That's a quick flip. That's only a ten or fifteen thousand dollar. You know, I can do that quick. The rents are good and so forth. So, and then wholesale the rest, right? Instead yeah. of stepping over them, right? Don't yep. step over a dollar to pick up a dime. <laughs> but um, you know, at the same time, it's good to know. You know, have knowledge about all of your possibilities so that you don't have to um, turn down any opportunities. Yeah, no, I, I 100 percent agree with you on that. And I think that, um, you know, getting uh, again, getting to know all of these different ways to do things, different strategies, different yeah. strategies, like yeah. it just makes you a better investor. Yeah. OK. So, so I'll go to a seller and like I said, I'll analyze the, the properties, you know, analyze four ways always, 
right? So mm -hmm. low ball cash offer, right? Here's here's my number. Yep. Um, if you'll entertain a lease option mm -hmm. or a land, land contract yep. or a subject to, yep. right? They can't do a low ball cash offer if they don't have the equity. Right. Just their hands are tied. They can't do it. Yeah. Right. And so it's not always a distressed property. Sometimes it's a distressed situation. Yes. Right? They got into a property. They can't afford the payments anymore. They they didn't want to go into foreclosure. Well, guess what? I'll come in. I'll just take over your payments. Mm hmm. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room 